Hey everyone, and welcome to this next edition of the Snapchat. I'm joined today by none other than Cozy Snap. Cozy, we've got a great episode ahead of us today. This is one of my absolute favorite ones that we do. We're going to be going back in time. We're going to be taking a look at what we ranked the cards of March this past season. And we're going to be discussing where we ranked them, what we thought, and most importantly, give an updated final rankings for those cards. Retrospect, as I say, 2020 is just beautiful. And we get to do that on this version of the Snapchat. Cozy, how you doing, my man? Oh, uh, you know, uh, if, if you guys didn't watch Alex side, a little bit uh, under the weather. But uh, other than that, man, you know, I've got to play more Snap, which is fun. But uh, yeah, man, just looking forward to the new season. Yeah, the new season is going to be great. We covered it on Cozy's side. If you haven't watched that yet, uh, be sure to check out the link in the description. And of course, the link at the end of the video here today. Now, Cozy, what we're going to do is we're going to start with Hope Summers. Hope Summers, the season pass card. This card has definitely had a massive impact on the meta. Has a 31% meta share as of right now. Um, a great win rate, great cube rate. Cozy, we came in pretty hot on Hope Summers. I had ranked it a 5. You had come in at a 4.5 in classic cozy 4.5 fashion. Listen, I'm just going to say it. I think this is a five-star card. Yeah, yeah, She's good. I, I, I'm, I'm glad we've uh, held ourselves now to only do one five, I think, is what our new kind of standard was. And, uh, yeah, this was the one to hit. It's crazy. This game and reading cards, it's so hard in practice to see if they live up to the potential and just their play lines and what they do. We knew Hope Summers was going to be really good because she just adds to what the fuel of a deck is already doing. And she has stood the test of time, man. I, I don't know about you, but when I'm building decks, it's almost like, hey, this could this could use Hope Summers and, and just synergizes with some of the best ones out there. It's such a natural inclusion in so many different decks, like honestly. And it's uh, it's similar to what we talked about with, with uh, Red Hulk. Like you, you could put this pretty much anywhere. It really goes pretty much anywhere. And even in decks that aren't like designed, like at first we were like, oh, what if we do balance? What if we do this? Like we get super greedy with it. You don't even have to. In fact, one of the best performing decks with Hope Summers right now is one that's recently re-emerging. And believe it or not, I'm gonna show it on the screen here. It's the auto deck from Silver Surfer, the classic Sebastian Shaw, Nova, Forge, Okoye, Brood, Rogue, Silver Surfer, Killmonger, Nakia, Hope Summer, Sebastian Shaw, Absorbing Man, and Sarah. Can you believe that that deck is making a comeback and it's doing it on the shoulders of Hope Summers? And it's been a remarkable performer. Like, I, I just honestly, seeing a Silver Surfer deck running a 56% win rate and a meta stock with amazing cards and amazing decks, it really brings a smile to my face. And uh, unfortunately, Hope Summers is also really good in Thanos and really good in all these other archetypes, which it also helps elevate. And they don't need to be elevated, but... Honestly, this card's been remarkable. Yeah, she's going to set the standard moving forward for like ramp and maybe even season pass card. Like that's what's tough about ranking something like Baron. Okay, it's cool. It's plug and playable. Uh, but then you have Hope Summers that is not just a ramp card. It's really the first of ramp cards that can be played across the board. Like almost like wave on release. Like where you just had this, like just have wave in there. Why not? You can play your Doom early and then you can do some more crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah, Hope Summers is... Uh, uh, yeah, it's good to see uh surfer come back especially uh, just a deck that can counter just about anything it's just kind of a jack of all trades deck and it's good to see you know that one re-emerge yeah so like definitely hope summers has been a great season pass card and it's been a couple months of like some ho-hum season pass cards we had scar which was good but it was not necessarily a meta shaker we had black swan which i think most of you forgot existed let's be honest right this has been the most recent one that feels like a must buy but also i'm gonna say this it's a must buy but also it's it's not meta completely wet meta warping it's not like what loki was doing like, you don't lose the game. You're like, damn it, Hope Summers, F, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's not that kind of card. You're just like, damn, they got Hope Summers on three. This is this game's harder now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a really good, fair, strong card. Yeah, she does. She feels good. It, almost like a, like something like X-23, right? Where, like, you're like, damn, they got X-23. This game's going to be different. It's going to be a tougher game. But you're not like, oh, man, that card's so broken. I'm so upset about it, right? Like, it just changes the way. Uh, you know, it does the same kind of similar effect as well. Uh, and, and it's really opened up some other cards that needed some love as well and, and bring that back. I mean, I don't know about you. Professor X has definitely found his way a bit more. He's not like super meta or anything, but he's found his way a bit more because, you know, you have Hope Summers able to do this like cheeky lockup thing. Uh, and, and now thanks to the new like normal stat line on the three cost, the three fives of the world, you know, three, four is still stupid good stats for what she does too. 
No, there's no doubt about it, right? So honestly, Hope Summers, absolutely excellent card. It sets the stage and perhaps the baseline for the expectations for season pass cards moving forward. Very well designed, very fair. Happy that this is in the game. And again, a 31% meta share. They sold season passes this month. That's for sure. A lot to love about Hope Summers. Oh, and by the way, this should not be relevant, but I'm going to say it anyways. Without question, one of the absolute best season pass variants we've had in the longest yeah. time. Mm -hmm. yep, absolutely, absolutely awesome season pass variant. You love saying, why, why haven't you upgraded your card yet? Dude, I, you know what? I've I've waited for the perfect Hope Summers variant, and I love it. I love it. It's a great variant, but I'm like, maybe maybe, maybe they're going to release. I don't know. I, I've, I've waited, and I've waited, and I have like 247 boosters or something, so I'm, I'm ready to, to, to rock and roll on it, but you know, I feel like they've done really good with all the season pass variants. Most of them are pretty cool. Like Black Swans was pretty sick too. No, I thought it was yeah, okay. It was pretty cool because it's like, yeah, it's it, the art. The art's been remarkable. That's actually one thing about Marvel Snap that I think draws a lot of people in. The art is truly fantastic, and it's just fun to play with art that's as good as it is. And uh, talking about good art, Pixie, Pixie has some good variants too. But uh, in terms of the actual gameplay, Cozy, I'm not sure what happened to Pixie. In fact, when I was going through some of the stats, Cozy, I actually think that your deck, the one that you designed for Pixie, was one of the absolute top performers. Uh -huh. You had the Black Knight one, which is one of the top performers. You also had the um, the Hyeva one that had the mix in with the Professor X, which I actually thought was really, really cool. And even without Pixie, I think that adding Professor X in Evo decks is probably being slept on. And your boy, you came up with that. I, I like that. So I want you to kind of lead with Pixie, but I got to tell you, I think on aggregate, it's not looking very hot. It's not like this, like, oh, sweaty competitive card. I think it's a super fun. Let's start there. But B, I think it, it does hold its own in certain ways, and it depends on the deck build. So, like, why it works in High Evo so well is, like, if the card doesn't get a reduction, you, you're still fine, right? So, like, Eliath and Hulk and these cards, it's like, if they're still six, that's okay. They're so OP at what they do. And yes, you know, you don't want, like, a Cyclops of yours being, like, a five-cost card at that point. You need the great ratio of one cost, which that, you know, has a Nebula Sunspot, and then also these higher-cost cards to have that perfect kind of synergy we also did not know or at least understand the swapping mechanics at first of like it can swap with itself and there's been some wonky things that have happened with that and the reliability there i think it's super fun it has a lot of upside to it and it still has the strengths of what it does well i personally like it opposed to even mr negative like i think it just has a lot of creative deck builds to it as uh you know alongside it but uh yeah pixie i think we both said what we would we both said it was gonna be a very fun card we didn't expect it to be like meta shaping uh, or we could have said, I think we may have said, like, it could have that potential being stupid busted before we knew the swapping effect. Yeah, so we were kind of low on it. You were a little higher. You gave it a three. So, th I yeah. mean, a three is not high. That's, a like, a tempered response. I, got, I gave it a two. I gave it a two. And, uh, I mean, listen, it's running a 45% win rate. A yeah, negative 40 right. cube rate. It's like, oh, Dude, no. People, people, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, these stats decks, are, man, these stats are one star stats. Yeah. I don't think it's a one star car, but these are one star stats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, I, listen, I'm, I'm big on stats, I, but I also think there are cards where like that player is going to play different and Pixie is one of those kind of like fair. all in. But like, I, for instance, I really liked it with War Machine too because like you do just get this chance. If you get yourself something like an Infinite at a two cost, you just have this different gameplay. There's some really like you win the game type of decks. If I'm just trying to kick back and win games still, but in a more fun, leisure way, it's with Pixie. That's fair. One thing I want to mention, though, and this isn't necessarily to do with the power of the card. It has some impact on it. I really, really don't like the shuffle. Like, I don't. Like, I know I'm. this might be like the idea of like, you know, oh, sticking no, my yeah, heels weird. in and getting yeah. angry. I don't like it. I really do think that there should be like a swap. And I know there's people, well, Alex, if you do the math and you can't. No, I don't care. I don't do math. We know that. Okay. Anybody that's watched my stream knows I don't teacher. do math. I don't do <laughs> yeah. But like, I just, I really do think though that like the, they should not be swapping themselves. Like I understand why it's happening that way, but I feel like Pixie logically makes more sense if it's a swap. And I think it's way stronger that way. I think the, the statistics illustrate that it could do that and not destroy the game. Yeah, and I wish because then it has this predictability. Like you pull your sunspot and it's a five cost. You're like, aha, my Legion now is going to be a one cost, right? Like I, I wish we had that to it. And the, the swapping itself, it almost makes you just build weighted decks at just like put in a good amount of six costs in there and then just let it fly and see if you get your Dr. Doom at a two cost and then haha, -ha, right? Uh, but no, I've liked her a lot with sunspot. A ton with Infinite because if you do have these big cards now, 
funny enough, like, I, Mobius is good. Obviously, Mobius has a lot of synergy with her. Uh, but on curve, why, like, I'm not always playing Mobius in those decks it, with the way it works. I'm not saying that's it's a very good synergy. Uh, but I like Sunspall a little bit more there because then you just float it on over to her, uh, over to him, and then, you, you know, you have the, the crazy potential with her. So, you know, we'll see, uh, you know, how she ages over time. I think she's going to fall into that Mr. Negative type, you know, play. And that's fair. And I honestly, again, I really liked your Evo rendition of the deck. It's actually one of my favorite Evo decks I've played in a while. But my concern here is that, like, with Pixie, you go Pixie 2, Mobius and Mobius on 3. And Mobius was not only great offensively for yourself, but it also shut down the Mockingbirds and everything else that was going on, right? Even, even the Toxic Sarahs you're starting to see now. So Mobius had this, like, two-pronged attack. It was so important to the deck. And it's like, even with that, I felt like Pixie still kind of underperformed, even with the potential to like have that like absolutely remarkable two, three combo. But, and this is the last point I want to make about Pixie. When someone plays Pixie and snaps, I sweat. Yeah. Cause like, cause seriously, like what did they do? Yeah. What, what did their wasp become? You know what I mean? Yeah. And even more so I've learned if you do like a turn four snap, you play Pixie, you wait a turn and then you turn four snap. Like, Oh my God. Do they have two? Do they have a Doctor Doom and, a, and an Odin or whatever, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah, she's cool. I think I think people should try her out more. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely worth trying out, um, you know, maybe in Conquest a little bit until it gets buff. But until then, it's definitely a fun card, as you did say. Now, there's a card that is fun, but is way more powerful than fun. And that, my friend, is Mockingbird. Mockingbird, my gosh, is probably one of the biggest, I wouldn't even say surprises. We were pretty high on um, Mockingbird. Yeah. I came in at four. You came in at 4.5. And even then, I was listening back to it. You were like, Alex, I kind of want to lean. <laughs> you were starting to lean even higher. You were just, you were practicing restraint at 4.5. I think this is, a, I honestly, this is probably another five-star card. Honestly, it's, how could it not be? When we were talking about it, I just kept thinking to myself, like, I'm so okay with just playing a 5.9, even if everything went wrong. And there's so much, I mean, Baron Zemo is another example. There's just so many cards that ended up discounting her in locations that we just didn't realize as that started to add up. And she kind of single-handedly is making Thanos. Like just the, the stones are a thing, but Thanos and, and the way those discount her is just insanity. And, and she builds into a lot of great archetypes. Truly, I, you know, I, I could think back, but this has been a great season of these like cards that are working in multiple decks. The Hope Summers, the Mockingbird, Pixie to a good extent. It, it, very unique. Yeah, this is running an 18% meta share, so it's definitely being played. But, like, I, I'm i a little disappointed with this in one way. I did not want this to be a Thanos card. I wanted this to be a yep. Zoo card. I wanted it to be a Patriot card. It has the opportunity, and it has risen those archetypes to the next level. It legitimately has. Thanos was this, like, unfortunate, like, benefit. Like, I can't believe that Thanos got this. And everyone's like, Mockingbird and Thanos, damn it, it's so good. I'm getting mad at Mockingbird. Like, we need to fix the Thanos side of it because Mockingbird is absolutely more than fair in Brood Absorbing Man decks. It's more than fair. And uh, in, like, all those different types of arch like archetypes, like Zoo and others that, like, really take advantage of even Shield. It it's a Shield card. Look at those paddles. She's ready to give a paddling on behalf of Shield. It just sucks that it's all focused around Thanos because she's so much better than that. Yeah, and they did that. You saw with Pixie, like they killed that synergy and you would think like maybe they were going to just include that little bit of text in there that cut that down. It, it, yeah, it, Thanos, I mean, we know at this point, like I think we're just exhausted. It's such a like, we've talked about it. He's deserving because he's that, he is Thanos. He's a big bad, but there is this, I would not be shocked. We got a patch coming up. We got an OTA coming up. Yeah, Thanos' is time in the sun is going to, probably be dimmed we're gonna be looking at the end of infinity war uh actually he's uh, i don't want to spoil it but you know okay thanos is gonna change probably yeah, don't don't spoil things come on you can spoil infinity war technically it's the multiverse now right so there's like a trillion thanos is that am i not correct right so talk about like just perfect right like hey we can do whatever the hell we want now anyways right. that's a whole other conversation but mockingbird definitely cozy are we got at five stars here or what yeah this is definitely like one of the better cards you could have gotten Absolutely. And uh, again, unfortunate that it's being shoehorned in the Thanos where honestly, it is so much better in so many other decks. Now, here is a card that has been a surprise. And I am not sure how I want to rank Cannonball because my heart, we actually came in at Cannonball as a two. We both gave it a two. And in my notes here, I'm saying he's a two. But you know what? Over the last couple of days, I've been playing more Cannonball. Yeah. 
And I'm like, this card might be like one minor, minor buff from being so good. Like it's it's better, it's simultaneously better than I expected it to be and worse than it should be. Like there's something weird about this card. I can't quite put my finger on I wonder if the rock should always just be there. Like it should always just do the rock thing. Yeah. But Cannibal, I'm really struggling with even right now. I think to what I was saying about a Titania uh, for the clock side when we talked about White Widow, I think he rewards really intelligent play, right? It, 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 the clock strategy, if you guys have tried a clog deck and it just isn't really working with your style, it's a tougher deck to play. You got to really uh, not only like telegraph well, but you also have to re-telegraph well. But you also have to just be able to do plays that are not your just, hey, I'm going to play big power card. And, and Cannonball's got a lot of moving mechanics. I think he's going to go up. I think White Widow is going to help him. We need more reliable ways to clog the opponent's side. I, th listen, there are people that are absolutely crazy about him and love him. I prefer... A lot of the times other play lines but hey you know i i yeah what did you say you gave him a two we both gave him two right now i have it listed as a two and even right now i'm not I'm like i'm like i almost yeah. want to give him a three like he's um, not really a two card i think he's better than that and you are right white widow yeah. coming out does have an impact the games i've lost against players playing cannonball like i don't care if it's eight cubes i i'm applauding them I'm like yes beautiful well yeah. done sir like you deserve it you know the, the world is your oyster my friend because like you played cannonball you absolutely trucked me perfect like it it has so much swing potential i just hopefully someone in the comments or like the community can like resonate with the fact that i'm saying that this card for some reason just doesn't feel right to me like i feel like it's just the smallest nudge to being a good card it's just not there yet it's too inconsistent i don't know if it's the rock thing yeah, where it's, it's like i just upside. want the rock always because sometimes you're just sometimes it's just stagron like yeah. who when was the last time you played Stegron? Never. Yeah. I know you haven't, right? Because you who the hell plays Stegron? Right. You don't want this. You don't want Cannonball to be Stegron. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think you got a lot with the highs come the highs, the lows come the low, and you have to really like work your way to that high to make it work. And it, 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 you know, you remember the lows. You don't always celebrate the highs, and so I think he doesn't give you that rewarding feeling constantly, which makes it tough. And again, I would say people that are extremely skillful. It's like the same people that like love move decks, right? It's like, cause they know what's happening. I, again, I'll shout out a guy named Mango. I'll, yeah, I played this guy in the ladder and he just torches. We played this Mango fella. This guy's like all gold move actually. cards. Yeah, I all have. gold move cards. This guy's legit. Uh, and I'm like, he's playing another Marvel Snap that I'm playing. Yeah, it, honestly, it's like it, move might be an archetype that's worth returning to at some point. Cause there was the point in time where there was the, uh, the Spider-Man 2099 deck that actually got to like top eight in a, was it the snap fan open? I think it was, I can't quite remember what it was, but, and Glenn was like, I told you guys, I told you damn it that there was a Spider-Man 2099 Finally. deck that was legit. Right. And so like, uh, it's funny what you like, what you can come across at higher echelons of the meta. And I, I've been trucked by cannibal a few times. It's just, so I'm curious, like what's your final ranking here? Cause I've gone in at two, I'm going to settle in at two, but like, yeah. I'm not comfortable on it. I think he might be better. I, like a 2, 2.5. Yeah, that's probably where I have him Okay, at. so we're about the same. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see him being a 3 or 4 in the future, though? Like, don't you, does, don't you kind of agree that he's, like, one little nudge away from being incredible? Yeah, White Widow, I'm telling you, man. when you, it, That's a two-cost card that you can add power, or you add the clog, and, man, and, and being able to fill those locations that much more is going to make that rock effect that much better. All right, so this deck is writing itself. So we have Titania. We have uh, White Widow. We Pinball, have Green uh, Goblin. Green Goblin. Doc yeah, Ock's got to be in there. Doc Ock. And I'm all, like, so the greatest list of all time being written. 65% win rate incoming. Absolutely perfect. All right, Cozy. Now, this is one that, uh, man. Okay, so War Machine. Love War him. Machine. Now, I know. Okay, so I'm going to let you lead the way here because there's some, uh, there's some conflicting stats and feelings here. And I kind of, I'm not sure what to think. So I'll give you the floor here. Yeah, th listen. Uh, I'm just gonna let time work its course over here. I know stats are bad now. I totally get the analytics side of things. Um, I I still uh, I still think he's a he's a he's a decently good card. I I don't think he's exactly. It's tough because when you looked at what he did, it really there's play lines and there's stuff that's like instantly five star. And this is what's tough about evaluating, right? Day one and even day two, dude. I was on a tear with this card, an absolute tear. I was on the Black Knight deck. Uh, that I concocted. It's doing great in Infinity Conquest. It's got 300 plus games to it. 59% nearly win rate. I mean, Infinity only. That's killer. That's actually near the yeah. top. If you look at it, it's near the top. And I in my video, I was like, hey, this is going to be a great, great Conquest card. And then pretty good around the board other places. 
Uh, he reminds me a lot of Super Giant. I think Super Giant got dumped on by every single person I could imagine. And then as time went on a little bit, it, it, there was kind of that niche and you could understand why. I think War Machine will settle into his own. When you have everybody playing War Machine, you couldn't do the control style, right? The infinite play is huge. I mean, we could get at that, but there is those risks. You're running these cards all of a sudden that have a different thing. Uh, but I love the goose play. I loved that in there as well. And, and obviously the, the synergy with Zabu. I gave it a five. Looking back, that would go to Hope and I would probably dial him back to a four. Uh, you know, but I'm, I'm happy to be in the same camp that I was with with Supergiant and, and, and was feasting on a Supergiant deck for a long time after her. And, uh, you know, War Machine, I, I'd be happy to be the one that's playing him. Yeah, I mean, War Machine right now, it's running about a 48% win rate, which is, it's low. It's low, right? And uh, I think one of the things we talked about on the last week's Snapchat was that the 4-6 power holds it back a lot. The effect's really strong, but it like, it's not, it's a white queen stat line, right? And I think that kind of holds it back, but its effect is so powerful, even defensively, not just with the infinite, but like, it basically makes it so that like, you know, stormed locations don't matter. Got clean or climb, whatever the hell it's called, doesn't matter. Like all these locked on effects don't matter. And that makes a huge difference. I, I think too, it's the next turn ability. Uh, the, you know, when you have like Jessica Jones, it's, you have these big upside power cards, but he, so turn six, him being invalid on turn six is tough. And a lot yeah. of times you're playing him on five. I mean, you, you're playing him on five a good amount. Obviously you can play him on four if you get things lined up. And to our point, he was a good Hope Summers card at that. He has opened up some really cool play, and he's, he's I think, elevated control. Uh, statistics aside, I think he has elevated control. Uh, Black Knight has always been this pop-off pop -off deck. But again, if you want to go off statistics, it, 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 they ain't lying. Uh, it, it definitely is has performed at a, at a pretty high level, uh, but it's still not being the hella version of the deck and things like that. I want to see how he settles into control. I do want to see how that works out with him. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think the next turn effect it does hurt him a little bit yeah like if i can go back in time he probably statistically he's like a two star but i actually i don't think he's actually two star i feel like he's more of like a three definitely i'm, I'm having a hard time like coming to terms with this because i really do respect the effect and in playing it i can see how it's so good yeah it's again it's hard to evaluate cars in this game very hard uh no question i think you know i i, I think truly sit and give it some time uh it's not like give it time like grant um you know grand mass like there will be cards that come out it's more of like uh day one man i mean you could not you i had to literally go the black knight route because i could not do storm legion couldn't have it could not do storm because everyone was playing it you lose yeah. the biggest oomph about it and you have a card that's almost pigeonholed to t4 t5 turn four turn five like that's kind of the only turn you're going to play this card and, and that yeah. is difficult that's difficult and it's really strong in conjunction you mentioned before like hope summers into a turn five infinite it's wild it's a massive power swing especially when you can throw it into a location that maybe they can't access say from shang chi or you throw it on top of goose right so there's a lot of ways you can play around it and so perhaps with war machine the best is yet to come and cozy that brings us to our favorite segment of the week and uh, this week we're doing two segments and that takes us to the mailbag. We're doing our mailbag here. We got a number of questions here, and I'm excited because we're catching up on the prior week's questions. We did the interview with our PAX friends, uh, you know, Ryan Hartman and uh, Dave. Who were, it was a it was a really fun time at PAX East, and getting to speak to them was was remarkably fun. And today we get to answer some of your questions, including one from Yash Patel, which reads: If there was a card that you could sign in the game, such as the Nick Fury variant with Samuel L. Jackson, what would it be? Personally, I think that Star Lord should be what Cozy signs, and Alex should sign Howard the Duck. Oh, so not like I was gonna say I want Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, but yeah. Um, it, mm, if I like, honestly, who do we resonate so much with that we would sign? I'm trying to figure out why. I, I get why you're Star Lord. Why am I Howard I, the Duck? I think I have. Oh, I gotta find my uh, my Star Lord. Why are you Howard? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, you're like uh, I would. Honestly, I always resonate with Chavez or even in the old days, like Devil Dino. I mean, this is if this isn't uh, uh, 616, by the way, for the Marvel fans, if this isn't indicative, this is me and uh, Star Lord Tribe did this. This was awesome. It's got to be Star Lord. I mean, like, the, I feel like he answered the question in it. I feel like I have to do Star Lord. Yeah, it has to be. There's even that one variant that looks exactly like <laughs> you, so too, wild. which is yeah, just yeah. too fitting. I mean, for me, I agree. I would love to sign. I mean, my my signing for Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur together? Like, is that is that what I'm doing? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't mind signing for, hmm, like, even even Groot. I would like to sign for Groot. But why would I sign for Groot? Like, I'm not Vin Diesel. Like, I just, I just love baby Groot. 
And our next question comes from two creepers, one Steve. Cozy, right off the top, though, not even part of the question. Do you know what that reference is? Two creepers, one Steve? Two creepers, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, uh, mine, Minecraft? It's a Minecraft? That is a reference to the Minecraft, which I still do not know how to play. Uh, the question reads, with so many great variants in the game, what do you guys think of SD implementing a way to favorite multiple variants and splits that would randomize from game to game? Yeah, I mean, I would love that. I, I think that's... um. I think it's cool to have that for a lot of the things like the avatars, the card backs, and just like pick your three favorites and then have those go out. Cause there's, there's a lot of, you know, splits you can make now that are sweet and it's tough to, tough to pick just one. Um, yeah, I am all for it. Yeah, I'm definitely all for it too, but it got me thinking about the custom card feature and how like I've kind of made the custom card I want for the most part. And now I'd want like a second custom card slot that it could rotate <laughs> randomly. Right. And uh, something tells me I won't get that for free. So it's like, right. you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I like the idea. I think it's a great idea, right? Definitely a great idea. But um, I wonder how that gets actually implemented. But honestly, the ability to like have favorited variants rotate out randomly is, is great. I, I really do like that. So great suggestion. And our next question comes from Willer Honey. And it reads... Should second tender give more time between balance patches? Sometimes it feels like as soon as players get used to playing their cards one way, they have to relearn the game all over again. It's fun, but at the same time, it can be a lot of information. Yeah, so on this one, I feel like the the really like eye-opening ones, like the Chavez from six to, to one to two to one. Uh, and then what was the other one? We just had another one recently that was it, it looks so weird at the at the oh uh Adam Warlock, right? Like those yeah. ones like you come back to the game you're like what the hell but like you know the captain marvels and stuff it's like okay you know i think i think those are good i think those really help the, the life of the game you know you've got competitive and you have casual otas really suit the the, the competitive player and then the casual doesn't usually like that because they come back like dude i just was playing with this card so you do have to find this ebb and flow and i feel like they kind of have right they're not doing them as often uh as they were even say like six months ago yeah, it's kind of funny too because so I play a couple different games, kind of even on my phone, a couple of mobile games, and uh, they get patched like kind of relatively frequently. And I don't even read the patches; so like, I don't even care. I noticed that one time I was playing this like tower defense game that was like kind of like multiplayer competitive tower defense, and like they patched this one tower like super super hard. I was like, was I bad because I wasn't even playing that tower? How did I not even recognize that right. apparently that is like the one that need to get patched nine times? You know what I mean? It's like, I, I guess like for Marvel Snap, there's players like that. They just don't give a hoot, man. They just show mm -hmm. up and they, they've done a good job of having that pop-up come up to be like, hey, just so you know, because I, I don't remember the circumstances, but I remember my brother saying who only plays like, like 12 cards, honestly. Yeah, he was like, yo, they changed this card. They could have told me before I queued, man. Like what the F? And I was like, what? And so like, I've definitely seen stuff like that happen, but uh ultimately i will say this even if you don't realize it you are addicted to the update cadence in marvel snap so no you don't want additional time between patches because you will start shaking with withdrawal because we are so used to the meta constantly shifting although i do like when the game has some time to breathe especially with the events like that x-men and avengers event was chef's kiss i loved it so much mm -hmm. i hope that comes back our next question comes from Sam and it reads, how many new emotes do you have and which ones are your favorite and what do they mean to you? Like, what are you trying to express when you miss Marvel or Cosmo emote somebody? Oh man, I, I, I like the new emotes. I think they're a ton of fun. I, the one I feel bad about using, the, the Iceman, like with the, with the sweat, or the, yeah. not the sweat, but the, I guess the water coming off it. Usually I do that if I've made it screwed up, like I messed something up. I'll put that like I'm ice cold. That's terrible. You know, dead, bad play. It's kind of like the Deadpool emote kind of does the same thing. Um, I sometimes, if I'm feeling like really, really toxic, if I'm like going into like, I have an awesome play about to happen and I'm recording and I'm like so excited they leave. I'll put that like emote as well. Um, the Cosmo uh, play is typically if I lose to like a blob or a meta card, I'll throw the Cosmo shades at them. Those are the only like, ones that i'll be uh the, the mad at ones the other one i'll do is like if we get like x-men mansion i'll do the uh the calling wing with the this right before it does it like i said like let's yeah, see yeah. what the hell happens man but what about you it's funny you mentioned the cosmo one because for me cosmo is like a really mild-mannered miss marvel thumbs up like that's the way kind of like i read it yeah. i haven't even unlocked it yet because i have not uh finished i actually have unlocked pretty much any of the 
uh, albums yet. I'm kind of behind on that for some reason. I'm not a big like variant purchaser, and I guess I haven't opened my 600 caches yet, so I haven't unlocked all the Dan Hips. But the one that I do have that I sheepishly did spend the money. I was with you when I bought it. We were oh, at yeah, PAX. That's right. yeah. I bought, I had to buy the Groot emote, the, the don't push the button. My whole plan for it is every time I'm retreating, I'm just I'm pushing the button. So just before I retreat, you're going to see my Groot come up. I'm going to hit the button and it's going to say your opponent has retreated. So if you're playing against me, you see Octavarium and you see the Groot emote come down. You just, you can just take your hands off the, uh, the screen. Cause I'm retreating. I'm gone. I'm out of there. Dude, I love it. And the last question for today comes from Super Cows, and it reads, If your kids were to start playing Marvel Snap, which archetypes would you coach them into first? Which archetypes would you try to steer them away from? Ooh, uh, good question. Honestly, man, having the most fun possible. So I'd probably say Pixie stuff or uh, even Mr. Negative's a ton of fun to learn. Hella, I think it's just like wild. Uh, Dex... They don't it's not that they don't take skill not try to throw shade but they are just more fun bound and then you also can have things that pop off in a huge way so probably one of those just to enjoy the game the most yeah that's a great point and uh for me anything that like curves properly to teach them about like resource management um i think would be really cool like tempo based stacks so we don't really have that in marvel snap it's a six turn game so you don't really see too much of that um i think that loki would be really cool to cheat teach them because loki teaches them like hey you don't have all the cards or you don't know what they're doing hey now you have all their cards and you get to see what their strategies look like and i think it's like a really holistic way of approaching learning the game because like you're basically playing with all the meta cards all the time right and yeah. i still think that loki should be a new player like inexpensive bundle they should be selling if you're going to sell anything second dinner sell instead of these these four you bundles where they're spending 60 dollars on right. mystiques give them loki give them loki damn it like yeah. give a new player loki i think that'll be really beneficial but anyways i really like that that was a great question and it's funny because i talked about like my daughter i've been teaching her how to play um you know pokemon we've been playing together with the car game and she's like dad i want to open up some more packs i'm like daddy can't afford more packs they're super expensive but she doesn't care she just wants to keep tearing packs yeah, right. and you know what the problem is i got a soft spot I keep buying packs to my wife's dismay, man. <laughs> but you know what? It's been great because we've been playing the actual trading card game, the actual strategy game. And uh, at first I was like letting her win, but now she's actually beating me. That being said, I'm letting her play with a little bit of a better deck right now. Like my deck's kind of sus and hers is pretty solid, but go. I'm going to close that gap. And I bet you she'll beat me then too, because she's actually getting legit. Dude, love it, man. Love it. I uh, got to play some cards with you in real life, man. Wish we could do it more. Yeah, we definitely have to. And unfortunately, Cozy has a 100% win rate against me. He beat me in Star Wars Unlimited, and he will just not let me down. Uh, you know, let me let it down, I should say, because, uh, you know, listen, I got to play with you again. We we actually bought some Lorcana packs. We didn't even have time to play. Maybe next packs, Cozy. Maybe next packs. But guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We really appreciate you guys. Cozy, I hope you feel better, my man. And everyone else, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on that next Marvel Snapchat episode.